Hello everyone and welcome. I'm back again with the custom 124 scale RC39 Chevy Street Rod build. Today I'm tackling the front suspension and steering. So far, getting the motor and drivetrain installed has been pretty smooth sailing, and I've been able to maintain the goal of making this car look and function as lifelike as possible, with this big block V8 covering up that N20 motor and a solid live axle rear end with leaf springs. Of course, if you'd like to catch up on the work that's been done so far, I'll be sure to leave a link to the video playlist for this project below in the description. The front suspension may prove to be one of the more difficult steps in this custom build, but regardless, I was able to make it all fit and work perfectly. This car is now at the stage of being a rolling chassis, and it won't be long before this thing can start moving under its own power. Don't forget, I'll also be announcing the winner of the giveaway I talked about in the last video featuring this project, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But without further introductions, let's continue on with this build. For the front suspension, I am deviating a bit from the beam axle and leaf springs that would be present stock on a 39 Chevy. Instead, I'm using one of our FC01 front suspension and steering assemblies. It's a very simple independent front suspension using control arms. Swapping an independent front suspension is a pretty common upgrade for older hot rods. Designing a very simple beam axle like what you see here would be an awesome thing to do in the future. Obviously the beam axle is a very simple design, would be great for a bunch of hot rod builds, and trucks use a very similar design, basically you would just scale it up a little bit. But staying within the confines I've given myself for this project, I only want to use STL files that are already available on Patreon, so that's why I'm going with this FC01 design. It shouldn't be too difficult to make work with this frame. This cross member here is designed to match the 57 millimeter width of the rear axle. And it looks like with a little bit of trimming on the frame and a little bit of trimming on this piece right here, it should be able to fit pretty good. Once I get the front suspension in place, I am going to need to find a spot for the steering servo. This cross member in here is definitely going to need to be removed. I should be able to come up with some sort of mount to position the spline on the servo right in the center and it should be down low enough that it'll clear the body. Not gonna focus too much on the steering just yet. Right now I'm going to focus on getting the front suspension assembled and installed. I won't go into a ton of detail on the assembly process of this FC01, as I've already made a bunch of tutorials in detail showing how this goes together. I will make sure to show what modifications I needed to do to get it to fit onto the frame. Throughout this whole process, I'm gonna to try to modify the frame as little as possible. I know I'm gonna to need to remove this cross member here, but overall I'm hoping I don't have to hack away at it too much. Really the only modifications I needed to make was trimming off the upper tabs on the cross member piece so it could slide onto the frame. It fits like a glove after a bit of sanding. I'm currently putting together the steering knuckles. As you can see, the ball joints are comprised of a small steel rod and a little spherical bead with a hole through the center. You can buy packages with individually sized dowel pins. I know you can find these on eBay and there's probably a lot of other places you can get them as well. Just makes the assembly process a lot easier having everything pre-cut. These parts are tiny, but with some nice needle nose pliers, you can wedge everything together and use a bit of glue as well. These here are M1 by four dowel pins, and these are M1 by six. Building your own tiny ball joints can be a little tricky, but with a good pair of pliers and some patience, you can get it done. Buying those small dowel pins really does make the assembly process a lot easier, rather than having to cut each individual section of one millimeter steel rod. Being careful and paying attention to the details during the assembly process is important, as a poorly assembled suspension may not move smoothly or stay together. I used a bit of super glue to make sure that the metal dowel pin stays secured to the 3D printed parts and that the ball stays secured to the pin. Here's a look at the completed knuckles. To 
the knuckles are complete, so now I need to get the wheels ready. These are the wheels included with the plastic model kit, and I'm doing the exact same thing as I did in the last video for the rear wheels. I'm cutting a little piece of the styrene tube, press fitting it into place on the back of the wheel, and then I'll be able to secure each wheel to the axles. With each wheel secured to the axles and the knuckles, I press fit the control arms into place, making sure to use some grease to help them move smoothly. So I've got the cross member fitting on the chassis, and I've got two control arms and the knuckle on this side installed. Originally with this setup, I thought this front wheel was gonna be aligned with the rear one. However, as you can see, this wheel sticking out several millimeters too far. To fix this, I could install a narrower cross member, but I really like how this one's fitting just on the outer edge of each of the frame rails. So what I'm gonna try to do is modify this piece of the wheel here to change the offset. Hopefully by doing that, I can move these front wheels in far enough to where they're inside the fender. I'm gonna do a little experimenting and see what I can come up with. A little unforeseen challenge, which is to be expected with a custom RC build like this. Fortunately, the solution was pretty easy. Rather than modifying the rear piece on each wheel, I simply removed that rear piece entirely. As you can see, I'm making some progress. I've got the wheels mounted to the knuckles. I had a little bit of a change of plans. Instead of grinding down this edge here on this piece that goes on the back side of each wheel. I'm actually not even using it. Instead, I just glued these chrome pieces to each tire and then I threaded the axle into the wheel. I used some M2 washers to fill the space between the knuckle and the back side of the wheel. I did use some glue to help hold the wheel onto the axle. And as you can see, they rotate smoothly and the width is just about perfect for this car. If anything, they're a little too far in, but it'll work. It looks like I'm barely going to need to modify the frame at all to get this cross member piece to fit. Really happy about that. So I'm gonna move on to getting the springs put in place. And then after that, I can glue this cross member to the frame. I did just a bit of sanding on the frame to make sure everything fits well. Much like when I installed the rear axle, I did my best to make sure that the cross member was installed as perfectly square to the frame as possible, though admittedly I am just eyeballing it here, but I think I did pretty good. So the front suspension is in and it's looking great. I love the scale appearance and there's no binding, no issues, just about perfect. I figured I might have to modify the frame more than I had to, so that was pretty cool. I'm hoping my luck continues with getting this servo installed. Basically all I need to do is get the servo spline in the center and down low enough so it can be connected to the knuckles. Basically I'm gonna chop off this cross member right here and try to figure out some way to mount the servo, probably underneath like that. I've pretty much figured out a way to get the steering servo to fit and be positioned where I want it. The only modification I really had to make on the frame was just chopping that cross member to be wide enough so the servo will fit right in between. 
To connect this side of the servo to the frame, I just cut a little section of a body mount and ran a small screw through the center. What I'll do is I'll glue this bottom side of the body mount to the frame. So the servo can be positioned a little further towards the front of the vehicle. I had to cut some material away from this mount right here. Obviously I can no longer really use a screw to secure this side, so I might have to use a little bit of glue to keep that in place. Right now though, it's positioned where I want. The servo arm will be hanging a little bit low, but it shouldn't be too big of an issue. The spline is centered between the frame rails and the servo clears the body just fine. I'm gonna move on by securing the servo into place. I'll slide this arm on and then I'll figure out how long I need to make the tie rods. When you're 3D printing tiny parts such as these tie rod ends, I highly recommend using a small size nozzle such as the .25 size that I used. All the parts for the FC01 can be FDM 3D printed. Alright, so the steering is complete. Overall turned out pretty nice, works just fine. I did need to take a rotary tool and kind of grind down these edges right here so it would clear this lower control arm. I've got just enough clearance here that it'll work. By no means is this a perfect setup, but it'll certainly get the job done. I'm gonna wait to install the screw that holds the servo arm onto the servo. That's because when I power up this servo for the first time, it's gonna automatically go to center. Once the servo centers itself, then I can go ahead and install the servo arm. Turning radius should be pretty good. I've already made sure that the wheels don't rub up against the body at any position. All around a really nice scale looking setup. I'm really happy with how this car is progressing. Getting the steering and front suspension put together actually ended up being easier than I thought it might be. Didn't really need to modify the frame a whole lot. Of course, as you may have saw, this big block engine is gonna fit just fine even with that servo in place. Still have plenty of room up there in the front. In fact, I may even be able to fit some kind of radiator on top of this servo. The chassis is basically ready to go at this point. The only thing left to add is the electronics. Little by little, this car keeps getting closer to being ready to drive. I'm happy to have put this step of the build behind me, and I'm hoping for continued success getting the tiny electronics installed. At this point, I'd like to go ahead and announce the winner of the giveaway presented in the prior video. A huge thanks to everyone who participated and showed your support on that last video. One comment has been randomly selected, and you will see the name on screen right now. If that's you, simply go ahead and send an email to the following address within seven days of this video being posted. Otherwise, I'll redraw for the giveaway. I'll confirm you're the commenter by giving you a secret word to add to your prior comment, and after that, I'll get these items sent your way. Thanks again everyone for your continued support. If this video surpasses 500 likes, I'll do another giveaway. We just barely missed that like goal on the last video, so if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like. I'm glad so many of you are as excited about this project as I am, and I hope you enjoyed this update. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.